welcome to another of my painting tutorials. Uh, today we'll be going over the Heroes of Rune, I believe is how it's pronounced. And if you would, uh, like and subscribe to this video if it's helpful. Uh, these models are pretty simple to paint in that uh, there's only uh, a few colors that we'll be going over. And that's uh, gold, red, uh, gray, and, and uh, just the basing and stuff. So I started off, I built the models. You can see my video on building that. There is a couple of um, things that may you may find helpful as far as the order of putting things together. So check that video out. Uh, I primed the models um, in gray, just a kind of standard gray. Uh, most of the colors we'll be using are dark, so uh, even if you went with a black, that would be fine. I started off painting the gold areas, and I just referred to the Forge World website to see what pieces and what parts of the model uh, were gold. I went with the Pro Acryl Rich Gold. Um, so I went with Pro Acryl because I wanted a more viscous or a thicker paint versus going with like Vallejo Metal Colors, which is very thin and runs a lot. As you can see on the shield character, I did paint the red areas up here first, so we'll talk about the red that I use here in a moment, just because it's easier to paint in those areas and then go over the raised part. So just using this thicker paint, uh, sometimes it does require uh, multiple coats to uh, uh, cover it, but uh, I, I only thinned it down very lightly um, because I don't want to um, dilute it too much. And then it, it, a problem that you have with metallics is uh, breaking up that medium that's in there uh, and then not getting good coverage. So here you're going to see uh, just a, like a 360 of each of the models and what I covered in gold. Um, if you cover an area, you know, that's going to be in red or, or a different color, it's okay. Um, but going the other way, if we painted the, like the red and the black, and then we get a little gold on that, it's harder to go back and cover it up. So I wanted to start with the gold first. Now I go, I'm going over all the red parts and I went with a, um, a vibrant, uh, bright red. So the Pro Acryl Bold pyrrole red um, other equivalents uh, I think corn red is a dark red or I can't remember what the uh, Vallejo or the p3 uh, red are but I wanted something bright because we will be going over all these areas with a black or a dark wash uh, and then highlighting back up but uh, so I didn't want to go with a like a burnt red and then put a wash on it and then have to um, highlight up you know multiple uh, layers. I just want to go with one base color, one wash, and one highlight. So just a simple um, paint scheme here. So after uh, going over the, all the areas um, in that are red on the models, looking at the website, this would be the black or the dark areas. Now I don't want to paint it black because if it's black you can't you can't differentiate the shadow. So I went with a dark neutral gray or any dark gray so that way I can put a black wash on it and it'll uh, bring out some of the the depth and the shadows there. So we'll be able to both have shadows and highlights and a mid-tone uh, going this way so any any gray or mixture of uh, you know black and white to get uh, there but uh, you probably want to go on the darker um, uh, sp spectrum part of the spectrum this is even a little lighter you, I definitely could have went uh, mixed in a little more you know black on this so just refer back to the uh, website uh, they did have a 360, I believe, of the models. And uh, um, you can see all the areas, the, the scabbards and different areas that are um, dark. It's easy, you know, to tell. Uh, there is a difference on the website of the two models for the under part of the cloak, whereas on this one, it's black. On the shielded character um, on the screen now, it's red. Um, 
these models I didn't even I, I don't even have these models anymore I've already sold these models off I just wanted to paint the new ones which brings me to a question uh, do you want to see more Lord of the Rings stuff I know there are a lot in um, upcoming Easterly and um, the City of Dell models coming out and uh, I can pick those up and paint them if it's something you'd find helpful there are a few silver uh, parts to the model uh, the blade here and the blade of the sword um, I believe that was all there was so uh, just just a few small bits and again you can go with any silver uh, we'll be applying a wash or you can use a, a non-metallic metal so while that's going drying going on um, I'm just painting in the base I had applied just a, some small sand uh, grit to the base uh, the you know before I primed it and now I'm just covering this with a brown uh, which will go back and add some uh, uh, shade and highlight to I also uh, desire I, I, I want to promise you uh, I promise you that I'll try to be better about staying in frame in future videos but uh, what we have here I'm going over all the entire model excluding the gold uh, metallics with a with non oil or any uh, black uh, or dark tone wash so this is where we're going to start getting um, some of the, the contrast and getting to see the shadows and then um, we'll be able to more easily tell the areas that we will be highlighting up uh, again just try to be careful around the gold parts if uh, you do get some uh, an errant brush stroke uh, on the gold just you know wipe that wipe off the brush and then uh, you know kind of soak it up with the brush or, or another brush that you may have handy and it's not going to be the end of the world because we're going to apply a, uh, um, a wash over the gold kind of to knock down the the just the, the incredible shine going on with the uh, with the golds so just uh, work you know carefully around the model um, kind of one section at a time you know that you know I'm working on one section of the cape and then I'll go to the next section so now I'm going over the gold metallics with a red wash with which Reichland flesh aid is it has has that red to it um, and it, it I like it it knocks down the shine it creates a little bit of shadows where it gathers uh, around the details and in the shadows um, just you know have a controllable amount of shade or, or wash on your brush as you go over it and that way you know you can always you know uh, if you're too light-handed just go over it again uh, sometimes these flat areas like the uh, top of this helmet part since it doesn't gather you may go over it once lightly and you know after that dries you look at it and think you know I, I want to knock that down you know the shine down more so you just go over it again uh, again I used to shade just really quick and try to do it real fast and I've really uh, I, I think you can you know just having a more controlled um, plan uh, you do much better uh, with your coverage it doesn't pull up uh, in unwanted areas so on the base as uh, we're waiting for the Reichland flesh shade to dry completely I went over the base and this is probably a brown wash like an Agrax earth shade or something um, you could use black or normal if you want but I uh, just wanted to go over the brown with this uh, just to let it seep in so that it has some shadows now there is a little bit of flesh areas uh, the eyes through the helmet and the mouth and I believe it's the neck on the uh, the other model so I just used a uh, just a, a Caucasian flesh color a tan flesh here you can use Bugman's flesh or any other um, flesh tone that you want and this, uh, I'll let you know, this is the extent that I did on the flesh. This, it's such a small area. Uh, you could always go back over that with like a red uh, wash and highlight up. But uh, again, just getting these done. Uh, 
Again, just working in different areas of the model, just grabbed some ivory and doing a dry brush over the, uh, the base just to uh, create some, some more textures here. So now we're gonna start the highlighting, which to me is it's the most fun, kind of uh, rewarding part of the model. Um, just working, we're just, uh, all I did in this model was I'm highlighting back up with the base color. I'm not trying to uh, push these highlights um, any more than that. So it is more thin down. Uh, so they're the translucent properties of acrylic paint will uh, be will work a little more uh, and you can go back on you know uh, more prominent raised areas you can go back and, and apply that second or third layer um, as you want since there isn't a lot of um, color complexity in this you know we have red we have a dark black or gray and we have gold um, on some of these finer details like the ridge or fold of the cape here you know those would be great areas to really you know even if you just push it up to a pure red um, that you know it just really stands out and if you want to take it maybe one step more you can add a little bit of orange into that to uh, create even more contrast in that highlight some of the darker areas where that wash may have pulled up, uh, you can just go over with a, a lighter uh, consistency of the paint so that there's a little less black and a little more red showing. Also in the front of the model here where uh, it's just a small, almost ribbon of material, you know, uh, you know, try to spend a little bit of time and you know, define that out because a lot of it's gonna get lost in the small details. These are you know, like 25 millimeter scale models. So the details are already small and then they're just very subtle. So if you can pick those out, you know, the folds of the, uh, the little banner ribbon from the staff, um, things that are gonna be, the eye is gonna be drawn to. Um, it's nice just to spend, you know, a couple of minutes uh, going over those highlighted, you know, those prominent areas, you know, two or three times. So for the black, uh, we're going to highlight this up just back with that gray, uh, you know, mixture that we have. It's going to look, of course, wet paint, it's going to look a lot more drastic. Um, but again, with the lack of sculpted detail, these bold uh, highlights I think really, you know, um, obviously they're going to stand out, but I think in a very positive, artistic way. Um, it's not, uh, you're not taking it to the point of like comic style or shade cell uh, uh, painting, but it's just uh, letting you see these large, you know, this flowing cape. Um, there's going to be some different variations in the, in the color from the, the shadows and the highlights. And it's, it's a large part of the model, so you can use um, bold um, highlight areas. As you see, I, I haven't done the gold part, that little strip there. And we're going to get to that just here in one moment. But I wanted to uh, um, get all the area because I, I end up, a little spoiler, we're just going to paint the gold and not uh, um, shade it down. We're going to keep it because it's not metallic so much as it would be a metallic thread um, so that's what I tell myself um, since I didn't put a wash it makes me feel good about myself so here we go back with the bold uh, or the rich gold um, and just you know take your time take a moment and it's, it's a really neat sculpted detail and it really it makes the model look nice um, just that incredible contrast between black and gold right there and then the highlighting of the gold metallics I used a, uh, a white gold um, which you know it's a lot more white than bright you know gold but uh, just going again with that it's only slightly thinned down just so that it flows well and hitting the uh, the edges and the uppermost parts. The model's too small to, I think, 
effectively uh, use a dry brush technique. Uh, and there's just a few, you know, even that leg, the leg spiky pieces. You know, as you'll see when I highlight that, it's, you know, it's easy enough just to drag your brush over instead of trying to be, you know, real careful with a dry brush. And uh, yeah, as you see, just kind of using the side, kind of a overbrush method, I believe is, it's kind of what I think of, you know, it feels like to me. So just kind of getting them all, you know, quickly. And then, as you see, trying to keep the direction uh, of the brush going towards the highlight. So just work your way around each of the models. Um, you know, the hand, he has his, his hand out there, so just a, a great thing to, to highlight. And just uh, as far as a little, I don't know, color theory, uh, you know, your brighter highlights would be more towards the top. So the head and shoulders. And then, you know, if he has his knee kicked out, yeah, his knee's going to catch a lot of light. Just the uh, ends of the fold there. And here we go. We had our finished models. I hope this was uh, helpful, most of all, for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it motivates you to paint some more of your models, specifically your Lord of the Rings models if you could uh, i'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to my channel i'm making the push towards 500 subscribers i just a little personal milestone for me and uh, it just uh, keeps encouraging me to produce more and more of these videos if you have any questions uh, put them down in the comments i try my very best to answer uh, each and every one of you and i'd be more than happy to help you in anything uh, that you're working on until the next time uh, be well and uh, get those models painted.